Hello again guys. So I thought today I would finally get around to doing a review on the Suzuki Van Van, uh, seeing as it's the bike that I use for my motor vlogging and everything else. <clears throat> Now before I get into the actual review of it, I'll just do a tiny bit of history. So the Suzuki Van Van was originally just called the Suzuki RV, um, and it was produced back in the 1970s. came in three different engine sizes, a 50, a 90, and a 125, all single cylinder two strokes. Um, and basically it was a sand bike, it was a bike for running around on the beaches and stuff like that. Um, basically very much like a monkey bike in appearance, um, but obviously with a big fat rear tyre, big fat front tyre. And, yeah, uh, the RV incidentally stands for Recreational Vehicle, so it was always designed to be just a bit of a laugh and never anything too serious. So, the original RV was discontinued in two, no, 1980 something or other, the late 80s basically, um, and wouldn't be seen again in the UK until 2003 when they brought out the RV125 Van Van, um, which was a single cylinder carbureted bike. Um, basically exactly the same engine as this, this is a 2016 model um, but it's exactly the same engine, it's just got uh, had a carburetor instead of fuel injection uh, so yeah that's the history behind it, now let's have a look at styling So. It's an incredibly retro style bike. When they bought this out, they really wanted it to be uh, reminiscent of the sort of 70s, 80s retro, and they did a pretty good job of it. In fact, this one has been modified somewhat, which I'll get to in a minute, but the original one does come with quite square mirrors, which is very 80s. Um, and the exhaust as well, the original exhaust, because obviously this is an aftermarket one, the original one was a big bulbous thing, and again, it was very sort of retro, very, yeah, um, everything down to like, we've got the sort of like chrome surround to the headlight here, which again is round, we've got rounded um, uh, indicators here, and the whole bike is just very sort of retro style, but they kept it as close as they could to the original in pretty much all aspects. It's still got the massively fat rear section tyre, I think that's a 180 section um, rear tyre, and the front tyre is pretty big as well. So yeah, everything about the bike is quite chunky, uh, which is actually one of the things I quite like about it. The seat, incidentally, is, as you can see, it's a big wide thing. I mean, the passenger is going to be very, very comfortable on this thing. Um, and it's got this little bit at the front as well. And that's, again, it's down to it being a recreational vehicle. This is designed for going down the beach, you can have the missus on the back, you can have the kids on the front or whatever and just go for a little poodle around on the sands basically is what it's there for um, so yeah right uh, moving around yeah so obviously it's all very retro from the front nice little big front mudguard there it's a very very simple bike as well there's really not an awful lot to it um, that pannier um, is obviously a little uh, addition that I've put onto it they don't usually have panniers um, so yeah, anyway, getting on to the engine. So the engine is actually quite old. Uh, it originally came from the Suzuki GN125, I believe. Um, but that's no bad thing, really. It's incredibly robust and reliable. Um, absolutely bomb-proof, in fact. Uh, it's not the most powerful thing in the world. Produces 12 brake horsepower, which I suppose for a 125 is it's all right. It's not too bad. Um, the only slight downside though is that this bike is quite heavy for a 125 so that kind of lack of power mixed with the weight of it can be a bit of a pain. Um, also the standard bike, the standard exhaust system is quite restrictive as well I found so uh, in a standard form it is, does feel very restricted but at the same time it still feels like a very very good bike. Uh, it's certainly very solid um, you know for the price as well because I bought this back in January 2016 uh, brand new and it was about just under three grand I think which you know for a brand new Japanese bike which is pretty damn reliable and fairly solid as well it's pretty good it's pretty good value for money actually um, I'll just quickly go through the bits that aren't so great about it um, so one of the things is this front bit here because the mudguard doesn't go down far enough to stop it from happening all the shit from the road gets up on it and it does tend to chip the paint away and start rusting so you have to watch out for that you can get fender extenders and stuff like that as they call them um, but uh, yeah it's just one of those things the standard bike does suffer from um, another thing is just rust in general so these um, parts around here I don't know if you can just see underneath here I, I do try and keep um, keep on top of it as much as possible but if you're not careful they do start rusting a fair bit um, and similarly like this bit here 
it started to kind of bubble and do bits, which is unfortunate. But, you know, considering the price of the bike and how robust it is in general, a few little bits like that are to be expected. Um, the only other places are, if we look down here, again, the, I don't know if you guys can see this, the rear um, mudguard doesn't quite go down far enough to protect the bottom of the shock either. So you just have to either get an extension on that or just keep this clean. Um, and then the only other real downside to this bike is the chain and sprockets because it's got a standard 125 chain of sprockets on it out of the factory, which is a 428 pitch, I believe. Um, and it's just not man enough for the size of the wheel that it's and the weight of the bike. It tends to wear a bit quickly, so one of the things I have done with this is upgraded to a 520 set, um, chain and set of sprockets, uh, which I've found to be absolutely fantastic, by the way. I've hardly had to adjust them at all so far, so that's great. Should get a lot more miles out of those. Um, yeah, and apart from that, obviously I've upgraded the exhaust system. Uh, this is a full GPR exhaust, all the way from the front to the back. The front pipe is actually a fair bit um, larger diameter than the original uh, one, which seems to have let it breathe a bit better. I know, especially when it comes to fuel-injected bikes, if you're going to change the whole exhaust system, normally you would want to have it... Um, remapped to take that into account because obviously the fueling will be out um, but I spoke to both GPR and Suzuki and they both told me that I could put this full system on and because it's got the lambda sensor in there as well um, the fueling system is capable of compensating for the exhaust which is absolutely fine it's brilliant. Um, it has made a difference as well. It does feel does feel a lot better. Um, and also, uh, the sprockets, when I changed them, I did uh, gear it slightly differently as well, which has also helped immensely. Uh, the only other thing I've done, really, is just change the mirrors, because as I said before, they, did come, they do come with square mirrors normally, uh, the 125s. Uh, the 200s, I believe, come with round ones, but I just I didn't like the square ones so much, especially when everything else on the bike was so rounded, uh, with the lights and the indicators and everything. I just kind of figured, well, you know, what's the point? I'll just change them over and it'll look right. These mirrors are actually off of a Honda XL1000, I believe. So, yeah, there you go. Um, any other thing with Onti 5 is you get this, the carrier on the back. I've obviously got a top box there because I do use this for work occasionally. But, yeah, no, she's pretty fantastic. All right, let's get on the old girl. Go for a little ride. All right, we're still going, yes, all right. So yeah, it's a very, very simple bike. I'll just quickly talk you through this. There's really nothing complicated on here. You've not got a fuel gauge or anything. You've got a fuel light. What I tend to do is every time I refill, I uh, reset the um, trip, because uh, I know that it'll get about 150 miles to a tank. So I usually fill it up at around 90 to 100 miles um, and do it that way. But it has got a little light that comes on when it's starting to run low on fuel as well. Um, what else? It's a very, very simple engine, as I've already explained. It's fuel injected, being a 2016 model. But apart from that, it is still a very, very basic um, engine. Air-cooled, obviously. Uh, there's really... There's not a lot in the way of gears or anything else. It's a very simple machine. But this is what I love about it. It's pure, simple mechanics. It's a machine. You drive it. There's no complicated electronics, no gadgets, no nothing. It's just purely the thrill of the ride. Um, everything's quite easy to get to. Everything's well spaced apart. You don't accidentally press other buttons when you're trying to go for certain things. Uh, what else have we got? Neutral light, indicator light. There's really nothing else here. No RPM gauge, no nothing. It's very, very, very simple. Right. Let's go. I'm going to go this way, I think. So yeah, obviously, by nature of it having such a big, wide, comfortable seat, it is incredibly comfortable to sit on. Um, I can happily ride this all day long. And in actual fact, that's why I've got this bike, because I did have a 600, but because of the riding position on it, it kind of did my lower back in. So I went back to one of these. It's actually the second one that I've owned. That's how much I like these things. Um, so yeah, comfort-wise, it's very, very comfortable. Very nice indeed. Um, 
as I said before, performance-wise, especially in standard form, it's not going to set your world on fire. Um, if you do a few modifications like I have, it does greatly improve it, but it's still only a 125. You can't expect too much out of it. But having said that, it is still very, very fun. And yeah, the handling, it doesn't handle too badly. Uh, it's a bit of an interesting one because it's, it, you kind of ride it a little bit like a dirt bike. You don't lean around the corners like you do on a super bike. You kind of chuck it around the corners like a bit of a hooligan. Uh, but at the same time, it's got a much lower ground clearance than a uh, normal dirt bike as well. It's, it's got pretty good clearance. Uh, you know, if, if you do want to do a little bit of off-roading, it can do it. It's got enough clearance for that, but it's not got as much as a proper dirt bike. And that's one thing I will say. This is a fantastic bike for off-roading. It's great for green laning, it's great for stuff like that, but don't expect it to take on the harsh mud trials that a dirt bike would be able to do. It's not designed for that. The whole RV thing, the recreational vehicle thing, is it's a toy, it's a bit of a laugh, it's fun, it's not meant to be too serious, so it's not going to take on those really serious demanding tracks, and you shouldn't really expect it to. But I mean, from my point of view, I just absolutely adore this thing. I mean, as I said, this is the second one that I've owned. And I honestly think it's the best bike I've ever had. And I, I'm not the only one um, who has this opinion. I know there is a bit of a thing about this being somewhat of a Marmite bike. You know, some people love it, some people hate it. But there are a lot of people that love it. It's got a cult following. It's got its own owner's club and everything else. It is a very special bike. It's very unique. And you've got to remember, back in 2003, if you were looking for a 125 as a kid to ride, your choices were... Uh, proper, oh, hello, were proper dirt bikes, uh, right, hang on a minute, I'm going to have to get past these guys, oh, I don't want to upset your horses, thank you, guys, <laughs> cheers, hey, there we go, Right, what was I saying? Yes, so you could either get a proper dirt bike, um, or you could get a sports style bike, like a Honda CBR125 or something like that. But the thing is, is what if you didn't want any of those things? What if you wanted something a bit retro, you know, a bit different? And, and this was it, this, this was the oddball, this was the, this was the different thing, because not many people, or not as many people would have had them. Which is fantastic, because it meant that, you know, if you had one of these, you stood out a bit more. You weren't just like, you know, whereas all your mates pretty much had the same bike, you had something a bit different. That was what was great about it. And then obviously, you know, recently they bought out the 200cc version in the UK, and then unfortunately, this year, they actually discontinued both of them because of the Euro 4. So, you can't actually get these bikes, well, I think there are still some stock left, but you can't buy these new in the UK anymore. The 200 you can still buy in America. I don't think they've got any plans to discontinue that anytime soon. Um, and I think, I don't know what other countries, but you know, certainly other places in the world, you will still be able to buy this wonderful little bike. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately here in the UK, it's gone. It's all gone. Which is a shame. But, I mean, it doesn't bother me so much because I'm never getting rid of this bike. I, I just... It is my little pride and joy. I, I do intend at some point later on in life to buy another big bike, but I'll always keep this and keep it going because it's just, it's so pure. As I said, there's no gadgets, no nothing. You're just riding. That's all there is to it. No distractions. And, and not a feeling of going fast. I mean, some of these 125 sports bikes, you get the you get the feeling like, because it's got you in that sports bike riding position stuff, you want to kind of push it to try and go as fast as you can, whereas you really don't get that with this. It's just, you chill out, you enjoy the ride, it's, you know, you know that you're not going to be going very fast, so what's the point? That's it, it doesn't pull too bad. It doesn't pull too bad at all, really, but, you know, it's just relaxing. Right, overtake these cyclists. And then I will do a little summary. Blunt corner. Do, 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 do. It's a nice day for it. Well, 
out. Right. Where can we pull over? I think there's a place down here, actually. That'll do. Oh, hang on. Then go left. Uh, no. I'm going to go over there because this is technically someone's driveway. That'll do. Right. Uh, so, yeah, as I say, I personally absolutely love this bike. I mean, it's kind of each to their own opinion wise on this one but i find it absolutely brilliant um it's great i mean the handling on the road is pretty decent for what it is i mean it's not going to handle quite as well as a full-on road bike but at the same time it's uh it doesn't handle too badly and it's certainly quite reassuring because you've got low down weight and at the same time you've also got those big fat tires so it is it is quite a good bike for a learner as well i think i mean i personally would quite, be quite happy learning on this um, and then, again, as far as off-road is concerned, it's fine with green laning, it's fine for riding around the woods and stuff like that. Once the trails start to get a bit too muddy and demanding, then it's obviously a bit out of its element, because you've got to remember it's not got quite the same suspension travel and the same ride height as a proper dirt bike. You can get upgrades for it. I mean, one of the upgrades I'd like to do at some point um, in the near future is the rear suspension. You can get a, uh, uh, what is it, is a YSS or something, rear shock with adjustable preload on it. Uh, which would be quite nice. Um, but the standard shock isn't too bad at all, really. Uh, it's just a personal preference thing, because I like to use this for pretty much everything. I go to work on it, I go, you know, um, riding around the weekends on it, I go off-roading on it, I do everything on it. So, you know, for me, upgrading it, obviously, is a, is a thing I want to do, but it's not something you need to. Um, but, yeah, no, overall, it is, is a fantastic bike. It does have its problems it does have those little rusty bits that you have to keep on top of but as i say if you keep on top of them they're not really problems at all uh, it's the same with anything really i mean you're always going to find little niggles with any bike no matter how well it's made there's always going to be something um you know specific to that bike that's going to be a slight issue but as long as you keep on top of these things and look after them then these things are very rarely ever actual problems so yeah there you go well i hope you guys enjoyed the review uh if you do have any comments please do leave them in the comment section below if you did like this video please do give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please do subscribe to the channel um there's plenty of other stuff to look at so go check out the other videos and for now guys i will catch you again later